Alright guys, Mr. SFM here. Today you guys can see we're doing a repair on a floor scraper for our company. That's the one I did the last time. I just put that bolt on, but you can see that huge crack, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to clean it up with the flappy first. And then after that we'll go ahead and hit it with a grinding disc and just bevel it a little bit to fill a weld better. So this is right after the flappy disc is done. Nice and smooth, just cleaned it up. Now we'll go ahead and switch it to the grinding disc and we'll just bevel it in a little bit better, a little deeper so we can fill it better. So then once that's done we're going to get our clamp here and we're going to start pulling it closer to the joint and we're going to hammer it down just slightly to match it up. So the clamp kept slipping, I had to I ended up adding a piece of wood in there just to hold it and that looks about right. So the wood wasn't going to last long in terms of holding it so I had to quickly blind tack it. That's why you can't really see it on camera because I just I had to get it done. It was honestly breaking the clamp. So yeah, here's a better angle coming up. You can see I had to kind of hold that piece of wood and the clamp with one hand and really do it quickly before I lost the uh, positioning. Now that I've got my helmet on, I'm just going to go ahead and add a couple of more um, tacks in there just so I can get this piece of wood and this clamp off here as quick as possible because when I remove this clamp I don't want any warping or bending of this joint so that's sufficient enough we can go ahead and pull this clamp and this piece of wood off there's no way that's moving out of place now next we're gonna go ahead and just quickly clean off the weld with a wire brush now I can really go ahead and really start filling in this joint and cleaning up that seam. You better get a drink because this is a, it's going to take a minute. You guys can see a little bit here. Now there is plastic pieces on this scraper so I'm trying my best to even out the heat by welding majority of one side and then switching to the other side to to start welding the other seam. But first we're going to have to clean it off with a wire brush. And of course, the most common mistake, forgetting to put on your ground, like right here. Ah, shit. So now I really go ahead and start paying attention to the corresponding side. And really just taking my time and filling that in, making sure to get correct penetration. And we do not want the weld sitting on the top. For this job, I'm just uh, sort of keeping the video longer, letting you guys see a little bit more of the action. And, uh, Forgot to mention also I'm just using your basic flux core welder to fill in this joint. I find a lot of the time when you're dealing with outdoor field jobs with the wind etc. You want to kind of run off of flux core if you can. It also burns a lot hotter and you do not require any gas. You could also use stick welding process in the field, it's just I haven't touched that for a minute. Now of course the weld is not going to be beautiful, there is going to be spatter no matter how much you clean it, but for a quick field job, there's no problems here. Remember guys, always move around, don't forget to stay comfortable. So now we're going to go ahead and switch back to the other side and complete filling in this seam here as you guys can see again being very careful because there's plastic parts connected to this that will melt really just trying to pull the bead along until I reach the edge and what I often like to do is convex to end a little bit to give it a little bit of a ball and a little bit of extra strength so that 
we don't experience any cracks in the future again. So yeah, that's what I'm doing here just to finish off the end. If you need a cigarette, I recommend you have one now. So here we go again. This is after the first couple of passes. It's already, you could honestly probably just leave it like that and it would be solid. But you can see there's some cracking around the top. It's hard to see along the sides, but there's definitely cracking going on, on along the previous factory weld. And along the bottom, there's a huge crack. So that's definitely got to be filled in. So now, because I never really show any welding, I figured I'll try to give you a little close up of it. We're going to weld on shade 11, put the ground on. And I kind of basically ruined my GoPro doing this, but at least you guys get to see one time. So here we are, we're just going to go ahead and beef up the outer layer of this joint. Again, using one hand to hold the camera, one hand to weld. We want to make sure we get penetration. So now for this next part, we're just going to start on that crack that's leading to the bottom there and I didn't realize that I had a bunch of spatter stuck to the end of the gun that's why you can see in the video here it's I'm sticking you can see when I stick right I gotta show you right there I, there's one anyway there's a lot of sticking going on there so ended up cleaning the tip after this, but I didn't realize that I would built up that much spatter so quickly. To be honest with you though, I could have stopped at any time and cleaned the tip, but it's one of those situations where you have your eye on the bead and you just want to complete the bead and deal with what you have to deal with after. I knew I would still be okay regardless. So you can see that's solid. Now we're going to go ahead and fill in this bottom crack which is a bigger crack and we'll beef that up a little bit more. So we're going to go ahead and switch around to the other side, get into our bullfrog stance. Again we're continuing to maintain proper penetration and adjust our work angle accordingly. People often want to rush when it comes to welding things, but you have to understand that your comfort level is number one before you lay any beads. It kind of falls into that old rule measure twice, cut once sort of thing. Um, the last thing you want to be doing is laying a weld, the weld not penetrating or even worse being done incorrectly and having to be cut out. Now of course for this field repair here we're using a flux core process which is a little bit easier but um, if we were talking about TIG welding this rule would apply a hundred X because you can't mess up thousands of dollars worth of things. So now you can see we've laid enough beef in there for that joint and actually I'm gonna go ahead and and just add a little bit more just because I'm ADHD like that again always better to do it correctly once than to have to come back and fiddle with it again now for this part I'm just gonna hit about a quarter of the way on the underside it's not really needed I like to do it for a little bit of extra precaution and a little bit of extra uh, strength just to enforce that joint. Now I've left a little bit of this welding out just for time purposes. Um, I did do the other side as well, which I didn't show. You have to keep in mind as well that 
when I'm welding these two undersides, they're both very close to the piece of plastic and actually you'll see coming up, I actually set a little bit of the plastic on fire, which is no big deal, but it just uh, shows you more or less what I was talking about earlier. I also didn't really show the fact that I took breaks in between a lot of the welds just to allow the um, piece to cool down in between. So right about here, if you guys look closely, you can see that little piece of plastic on fire there. Just had to quickly blow that out. So now we're just going to go ahead and hit this with a double double, which is uh, primer and paint and just a quick little spray just to give the welds a little bit of corrosion protection. And this is pretty much what your final um, product is going to look like. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. If you have any questions or comments or whatever, just shoot them down below and we'll see you guys next time.